Now, in iCal, I showed you how I could open the address panel, and I pointed up th that this is information from the address book shown in iCal. But I can also go up to the window menu and open address book. Notice the address book application is launching, and here I am in address book. The integration with iCal and Mail and the address book is quite strong. And the integration actually occurs at a fairly low level. And it's exposed to developers. What that means is that if you are writing an application subject, of course, to security constraints, you can get at the address book information so that the address book can serve as the hub of address information on your computer and synchronized across several computers through a .Mac account, of course, that this hub of information can be available to other applications. Several features of address book are important. One is that I can assemble the addresses into groups. And if I show the groups and their names, I can see all groups. I can create another group here called Work, another group called Project X, and I can then show all the names and I can drag items into various places and drag them into multiple places. And you'll see this is what you've seen in a number of other cases of Mac OS X, as with aliases for files. Because we're in the digital world, something can appear to live in more than one place. When you click on all, you will indeed see all. But I can move any of these cards from one place to another. Apple is kind enough when it ships Mac OS X to give you a card for Apple itself. And here you have the information for it. During the process of setting up your computer, you may be entering information such as your name, either as part of the automated and assisted process or separately. You can enter the information to add a, a name to, let's say, Project X. If I click here, I'll add another group. But here, I'll add another name. And it starts by being no name. So we will assign it a name. And I type in what I'm doing is I can edit any card just by clicking here. And you'll see when I click Edit, I have extra fields I can work with. I can choose to store the card under a company name or an individual name. I can type in phone numbers. And I can choose in my preferences how things are sorted, the address format, and so forth. In my phone preferences, I can automatically format phone numbers in various ways. And I happen to like this one. You can choose the template of what you want on your basic card. You could add job title, for example. And I'm going through these rather quickly because they're the same types of interface elements that you've seen in other environments on Mac OS X. So it's not necessary for each particular application that we're talking about to go through the details of how you click and so forth. Notice that this phone number has now been formatted in accordance with the way I asked it to. I can add another phone number of a different type here. And consistently, I can add other, and I could also add a custom label such as weekend which now shows up in the list here that I can use. I can add all of these other fields and when I'm done click edit and it'll be just in the display format. There's one card that's very important and you can mark a card as the me card or the my card. Here you say make it the my card the icon shows me you can live with that, I think. There can only be one me card in your address book, and you need the me card to send invitations using iCal. So make certain that you have the me card set up, because that's where the invitation comes from. And those are the basics of the address book data. You've seen how it integrates with iCal, and in fact with Mail, because you can go into Mail and I'm going to create a new message and start typing. And what has happened is that mail went into address book to find a 
an address that starts with the letter V, which is what I typed. So it all fits together. 